Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica and our side series, The Tech Deep End. Today what we're going to be doing is going over the Hyper Neo Geo 64 motherboard in depth because it's not really talked about or well cataloged. And when I did the Hyper Neo Geo intro, I basically said that no one really knows what the GPU is, but through some research we've kind of figured out what's going on here. But taking a look at the top of the motherboard, we have a lot of different large ASICs as well as that FPGA chip. We have about 11 different chips on the top, all marked ASIC, and it is just a crazy system in general, just how many chips there are on this. The NEC VR 4300 being the processor is one of the smallest chips, which is really interesting, and that's going to be right up here, and that is the same CPU that was used in the Nintendo 64. And to the right of that, you're going to see the Neo 64 SYS chip, and I'm assuming that has something to do with the system itself. Okay, real talk, guys. We now know exactly what everything is because a very talented engineer, Reza Azmadi, contacted me on YouTube, and he diagrammed the entire PCB out so that we know everything about the Hyper Neo Geo 64, things we never knew before. So big thanks to him. He is a European computer repair tech who works for his parents' company. But taking a look right here is the PCB front, and he's traced out all the different ASICs and where they're going, looking at all the different pins on the chips as well as all the different traces that are going around so we get a sense of how all the different chips hook up and this is the most we've ever known about the hyper neo geo 64 because some of my assumptions were quasi correct but he's definitely done a lot more work to be able to identify exactly what is going on i thought things like the ren chip or the render chip were functioning separately and putting an image together where they're actually communicating and then we take a look at the PCB back where a lot of that 3D element's going. All the different paths have been traced out so we can take a look and see how every single chip hooks up to itself. And there were some things that were very interesting about what he identified was how anti-aliasing works, how in some instances anti-aliasing is available, but if the render chips are doing different things, then that anti-aliasing is not available just because of how the chips are being loaded and all the data that's streaming through them. So it's a very interesting system and how that 2D processing works, where the CPU is sending it to the system chip, and then it's going to a calculation chip, which goes over to the sprite and the graphics transformation engine, and then it works through all the RAMs and ROMs and back through that calculation chip again until it's putting up a portion of the image, the 2D image. And it's basically working the exact same way when you get around the back to the 3D image. Basically, there's two different image pipelines, but they're working in tandem to be able to produce that image. Compared to something like a traditional GPU where a lot of that's baked in, SNK must have really wanted to separate the 2D out because they were known for being a 2D company, and you weren't really going to be able to get a great 2D image out of a 3D chip like SNK was used to. But you'll see that that calculation chip for the 3D processing goes back up to the sprite engine and the background engine as well so it can combine everything together and you can see how all those different chips communicate with themselves. And that's really a lot of the interesting part of the work he's done is not only, you know, develop the overall schematic, but he's written out how the sound processing works, how all the different memory accessing works, and how the entire board communicates with itself. And I will put this PDF in the description below so you can read more through it because there's a lot of detail that I can't go through in one video. It's very technical and it's a great read. I suggest everyone who's interested read it, but I kind of want to do more of the top level surface stuff on how everything's working. But big, huge thanks to Reza for taking the time to do this he was super excited and that's the great thing about doing a channel like this or working with people in the community is you can really chat with them and understand their passions and get a sense of how everything works and how the system and cpu communicate with the cartridge on both sides of the connectors so we know exactly how the data comes in what the chips are doing how they're communicating with each other and all the different bits and bobbles for lack of a better term of how the hyper neo geo 64 works as a PCB because it's a very complicated system. It's something that you don't see that often compared to something like, you know, the Naomi or the Model 3 where the chips are a little bit more standardized. But getting right back into the main video that we were showing you guys before, we will do that last little bit of chip overview so we can still see what everything is and we have amended some entries to be able to talk about now more effectively what is on that board. But taking a look at the top of the board again, we have that color map for all the different chips. We got the NEC VR4300, which is the CPU, and it's shared with the Nintendo 64. Same chip, just a different platform. But then we have all the other chips that are running all the different codes. We've got a digital signal processor, and we've got that GTE transformation engine, and that is what affects the anti-aliasing. If that is using a certain communication method, AA is not available, and it's just kind of how everything works. When it's using that sprite engine or the background renderer engine, it can turn on or off. But that is what's comprising the top layer of the board. 
and this is the top if you're looking at the cartridge, it would be directly below. And here's the bottom of the board right here. You have the CVR, the Tri-2, that NEC V53A audio IO CPU chip, the calculation chip. And we now know that's not a triangle calculator, it's an arbitrator that's basically dividing the work up on how the processing units work. And that's something that we didn't know, that I thought it was a calculation chip because it says cal, but it's actually an arbiter to say, here's how the workflow gets handled. But short of that, read the PDF below. We really hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, Reza, for doing everything. If you could do us a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe. It helps us out. We'll be back on Sunday and Tuesday, another episode. But thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend, and we hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye.